see it right there. Which end of the buffalo is that from? <laughs> For this episode of Test the West, we're just off the Elkhorn River, nestled in the Fontenelle Forest on a perfect day for some hands-on history. Let's get to it. What's going on, everybody? Today, Sabra and I are out here to test the West, and we are going to be cooking and eating buffalo tongue. Come join us. Should be interesting. <laughs> now, we're all likely familiar with the sad demise of American bison, known colloquially as buffalo, that once roamed vast areas in North America. Suffice it to say, millions were slaughtered for their hides and meat, with the most valuable cut of the latter being the tongue. Buffalo tongues were procured in the West, smoked or salted, then shipped to eastern cities where they were sold for as much as 50 cents apiece in the 1870s and 1880s, about 15 bucks in today's money. Buffalo robes, that is bison hides with the fur still attached, sold for about twice that amount. Plenty of hunters didn't bother as it was far easier to shoot a buffalo and cut out the tongue and repeat the process than it was spending hours trying to remove a stubborn hide from a single bison. An 1870 article in the San Francisco Chronicle tells of Indian scouts hunting an old buffalo bull on horseback, writing that in quote one instant the animal was glaring at his pursuers from the bank of the ravine, the next the fatal shot was fired, and hardly had his shoulders touched the ground before his tongue, a choice tidbit, was cut out by the sharp knives of the dusky hunters. Meriwether Lewis of Lewis and Clark fame shot a bison during the expedition in 1805 and afterwards wrote in his journal that quote, the hump and tongue of a fat buffalo, I esteem great delicacies. Even following the death of the great Oglala Crazy Horse in 1877, the Cheyenne Daily Leader wrote that quote, for six weeks his wives and children will howl in anguish at his grave at daylight every morning and boiled beaver, fried buffalo tongue, and other delicacies known to the Indian cuisine will be heaped on his tomb in prodigality, that he may not want for grub while on his route to the happy hunting grounds. Suffice it to say, both natives and whites consider buffalo tongues a great delicacy, so delicious that it played a legitimate role in the bison's demise. So as a historian, it only seems fitting that I cook one up and find out for myself whether this legendary cut of meat lives up to the historical hype. I know what you're thinking. Nothing weird about a couple dudes out in the woods with one of these things, huh? It's all good. All right, now because this buffalo tongue's so big, it doesn't fit into our kettle. So I'm actually gonna have to cut this thing up, then we'll put it in there, and then we'll get to cooking. Now cooking a buffalo tongue takes time, about 50 minutes per pound. So in our case, we'll spend the next three hours sitting in the woods watching this thing boil. If this sounds boring to you, well, it is a little, but that's a good thing. In boredom, we give our minds a break from processing the stimuli of the outside world and allow our brains to inwardly wander. And this isn't just my opinion. Studies have shown that boredom shuts down our insular cortex, part of our brains important for processing information that we think is relevant to our immediate goals. This rest state restores and rebuilds the resources we need to work better and more efficiently when we re-engage with the world around us. Boredom is essential for brain health, productivity, creativity, personal sanity, and more. But thanks to smartphones, most of us never even get the chance to be bored anymore. At any lull, we bury our faces in our screens to kill time, with the average American spending three hours a day doing just that. If we keep that pace up for the next 60 years, seven and a half of those will be spent staring at our phones. It's kind of wild, right? So protect yourself from mental fatigue by preventing your devices from stealing your boredom and get comfortable with the uncomfortable. It's worth it, I promise.
All right, so we're going to peel off this layer here. So we take this layer off, and that should get us to the actual top. It's like fish skin. That's the meat. That's what we're looking for. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try some of this just as is, just boiled buffalo tongue. And then I think we're going to use another side of it and we're going to put it on the skillet and we're going to try that out, see which one's better. All right, folks, we finally finished the buffalo tongue and uh, I'm ready to eat it. I know Cyber's ready to eat it. Yep. Uh, so we have a portion that's just boiled. And so it's just straight boiled in water and salt. And then we have a portion that we use salt and pepper and we put it on the skillet. So we're gonna try both, see what's what. Let's dig in. Moment of truth. I think we should try the boiled one yeah. first since I'm thinking it's gonna have less flavor than the skillet ones. Yeah, the skillet ones. So, uh, Bon appetit. Okay. It's unbelievably tender. Yeah, it's like it's been like so cooked. But you would definitely, I think, want to put salt and pepper and stuff. Um, yeah. This one again, just boiled in salt. We just want to try it as simple as possible. On its own, it's almost got a slight wet dog taste. Do you taste that? A little bit, yeah. But I think any spices, I don't think you would notice it. No. It's good though. No, it's good. I'm not blown away by just the boiled no. buffalo no. I'm Not blown away by it. Oh man, that's hot. Ooh. This is the skillet. Buffalo tongue. It's gonna be a second. This is hot for me. Going after it? Alright, Sabri's gonna report back first. How's the skillet? Way better. Way better? Yeah. The added flavor from it and the getting that little bit of crispiness on yeah. to like, yeah. That makes it. Really? Yeah. Really good. Yeah, it's so tender. It maintains yep. that softness of like the boiled, but it gives you that slight crispy outside. Mm -hmm. And again, just salt and pepper on it. It just tastes like thick cut bacon, mm -hmm. but softer. Like yep. It's not chewy like bacon. Right. That's real good. Well, I can see why this is a delicacy. If you were a total asshole and you. <laughs> just kill a buffalo Pork. and you're gonna take one portion of it yeah I get why you would just take the tongue because mm -hmm. that's really tasty mm -hmm. all right now because Cyber and I are not above putting prime rib rub on <laughs> our buffalo tongue just to test it out just to see sort of how good can you make it right I mean if you were gonna make it at home you probably wouldn't just limit yourself to boiling it in salt or just putting salt and pepper. All right, you might want to put a little something extra on it. So that's what we're going to try here. This is a prime rib rub, and uh, we're going to see uh, if this takes it over the top or not. Oh, 
Oh man. Holy cow. Yeah. I, I can't imagine you can get better than that. Man. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is what they had to have done. Not prime rib rub, don't get but me wrong. Spices. <laughs> yeah. You put some spices on this thing? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Well, you folks, that's what we're talking about, right? That's it with some of the spices on it. It's just a Traeger's prime rib rub. Oh, man. This. I don't know how it's. All right. It's really good. I don't know what to. I'm kind of speechless by it. Yeah. It's just the, the most tender meat, and then you've got the crispy outside mm -hmm. with, uh, with the, the, seasoning. the seasoning on it. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't even describe this as like bacon like. This no, this is. I don't is, know why I call it. It's interesting that like just that adding that has like completely changed it. Completely. Like this is one of those things that you'd like imagine you'd be tasting at a party that billionaires have. And there'd be like three of these pieces this size yeah. on your plate. Right. And, and you'd, you'd be like it, and you'd be like, that's the most amazing thing yeah. I've ever had. Right? It's like yep. it's like, yeah, that's Sasquatch, right? Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> you can you yeah. can say it is anything and you believe it. Oh man. Yeah. I know people who are watching this are gonna be like, yeah, There's we no get way. it. It tastes really good. No, you like, don't. You no, don't you, get it. You have to taste it. You don't get it. You have to taste it. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how how far it's come then from just the boiled tongue. Yeah. To the salt and pepper tongue. To put me to putting seasoning on. I get it. I get it now. As egregious as it is for you know the slaughtering of the buffalo, the way that it was done in the 1870s. Right. Uh, I understand the taste for it and the demand for it right. back east now. Prepared yep. by somebody. I mean, even even out on the prairie, preparing it yourself, obviously you can still do yes. some great stuff with it, but yep. man almighty, oh that is a damn good piece this of meat. This is good, yeah. The best piece of meat I've ever that had. Is. Yeah, that's what I, I would say, is yeah. it's the best tasting piece of meat I've ever had. Pretty amazing. We're gonna cook the rest of this and actually just sit here and eat it. Right. So you don't have to watch that. But tune in next time. We got more. Yep. Thank you, folks. Now, before you head down the trail, if you folks enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a like. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, well, you know what to do. There's a lot more of this content on the way, so stay tuned, folks. Till next time, keep your nose in the wind, your eye along the skyline, and watch your top knots, pilgrims. We'll see you out on the trail. Which end of the buffalo is that from? <laughs> Geez, that's good. Yeah. If I was out west, I'd, I'd write home to tell my parents about it. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, it was worth the trip. If beef tongue tasted like this, oh yeah, we'd slaughter all the beef. They'd be gone. Yeah. We wouldn't even have the uh, the. We won't have the restraint to. Uh, no. Yeah. To Lord. breed them. That's a damn fine piece of meat. That's what she said. <laughs> Boom. Thank you folks for watching. If you guys want to farther support my efforts, you can do so on Patreon or buy some gear for the modern frontier for the Man vs. History Outfitter Shop. You can find those links down in the description. Before I go, I just want to make sure that I thank my Patreon patrons. Special thank you to my gold tier patrons, The Innocents, Ashley Gertensen, Hurt and Wade, Man vs. Moose, Bryce V, Cyber, Will S. Baker, Joshua Bale, Rich Christensen, Comrade Krieger, Sean Hatfield, Blake Cram, PBC98, Joshua Horton, Dawson E, Zonk Breezes, Noah Ovens, David Perkins, Nick Ninja, Noah5943, Jigsaw, Your Pal Mitch, Old Hognose, Coco Rockout, Occam's Ghost, Reese Yearby, Ari Bocklers, Mythical B60, and Gavin Abernath. Also want to make sure that I thank my silver and bronze tier patrons. Thank you folks for your ongoing support. Let's keep growing. Let's keep doing what we're doing. We'll see you all next time.